good morning, Mr. Najib. I'm Dr. Yap. I'm an anesthetist uh, in charge of you. Are you feeling well today? Yes. Alright, that's good. Uh, just want to inform you that you are having a sepsis and septic shock and your BP is a bit low, uh, Mr. Najib. And then uh, you are not responsive to fluids. That's why uh, we need to insert a central venous line on your neck to infuse some drug to improve your heart contraction. Okay, this is a life-saving uh, procedure whereby you have to insert it uh, to administer drugs and fluids on you so that your heart can beat properly. Right, let me tell you um, what and how the procedure is to be done. Is it okay? Yes. Right. Good. So um, this is called an internal jugular vein or IGV central venous line. Right. Whereby we will insert a, 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 a tube okay, onto your neck. It's a neck. So it's like it's a fine tube measuring about um, two centimeters uh, thickness, and then um, you will put it on your neck. In this side. All right. In this side. So whereby it will go directly to the right side of your heart. Okay, the, the line will directly go to the right side of the heart. So during this procedure, we will give some local anesthesia. Alright, to have you being numb, you have painless on your skin during the procedure. However, throughout, you may have some discomfort during the procedure whilst uh, maneuvering you. Okay, um, the complications are like bleeding, hematoma. And um, later on, you may have a uh, long, uh, what they call infection around the skin, around the area. But uh, don't worry, we will take care of the medication and make sure that it's clean throughout and it's aseptically uh, done. Are you all right? Yes. Are you clear with it? Yes. Do you have any questions? No, no, that's not. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Najib. After we have gained consent from the patient, we make sure that there is an adequate exposure for the patient. I believe from the neck until the nipple line. Okay, make sure the patient is comfortable at 45 degrees uh, prop up position. Alright, Mr. Najib, I would like to um, touch your right side of the neck. Is it okay? Yes. Uh, we need your cooperation. Yeah? Can you please turn your neck to the left side a bit? Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, firstly, we must identify the sternocleidomastoid muscles, which is bounded by the uh, medial side, okay, the, the body, and then the other one will be on the lateral side. Okay, the sternocleidomastoid has two um, bifurcations. It's like a V shape, inverted V. All right. So this is a medial border, and then on the lateral border, sternocleidomastoid, and then inferiorly is your clavicle. All right. The insertion is at the clavicle. So we are going to insert the in IJV, internal jugular vein, uh, central venous line. It should identify the thyroid cartilage as well. Alright, the thyroid cartilage is located in here. So it's perpendicular, this here. So usually it's here. At yeah, this side, we will feel for the carotid pulsation. You can see the carotid is pulsating below my uh, finger. Okay, so 1 cm lateral to the carotid pulsation, we insert our local anesthetic agent, lignocaine. After that, we insert the our needle into it. So once we poke the needle, all right, we will have to slowly advance it until we see the dark blood color, which is uh, venous in nature, non-pulsating. Okay, the venous blood is non-pulsating and it's darker. It's deoxygenated blood, and we are very sure that it's inside the uh, IJV. So once it's inside the IJV, we stop inserting further our needle and then we have to put in our guide wire to railroad it through the vein. Right. When we are inserting a central venous catheter for an adult, so we make sure that the adequate and appropriate size is there. So usually for an adult, we have to use the size 7 French, okay? size seven French uh, catheter. Okay, seven French, and then there are two types. Either the length is twenty centimeter, or it's about thirty centimeter in length. So logically, for let's say if you are inserting through the internal jugular vein or subclavian vein, uh, central venous catheter, we have to use a shorter one, about twenty centimeter. Or if you are inserting through the femoral vein, you just use a longer thirty uh, centimeter in length. So for these uh, catheters. They contain 
three uh, lumen. That's why they are called a triple lumen as well. So triple lumen uh, each will contain proximal, medial, and a distal uh, lumen, each carrying different uh, sizes of the uh, the tube. So the tube will have different sizes, which will have uh, different uh, rate flow. Okay, allowed by the uh, tubes itself for the blood or for the fluids to uh, flow through to them. Okay, so this is a central venous catheter, which is of two uh, types uh, with the same uh, fronge, the seven fronge uh, for an adult. For let's say for a pediatric, uh, maybe it's used size three or size four, depends on their age and sizes of the uh, pediatric population. So for an adult like us, we are using size 7 French um, central venous catheter. Alright, so once we are ready and informed consent has been obtained, make sure that we prepare our uh, central venous catheter sac. Okay, first of all, must prepare adequate lignocaine for anesthesia, local anesthesia. Okay, and then we open our central venous catheter sac and we have to identify whether they all are appropriate. This is the triple lumen, which I've already mentioned earlier, which is containing the proximal, medial, and the distal lumens. So you can see the lumens are containing 18 gauge for the proximal, uh, medial, and the distal. The distal one is 16 gauge, which contains the largest uh, diameter, and the flow will be the fastest. So the distal side is on the, on the middle side, and the middle side is on the, on the lateral one. So irrespective of this, we have to understand that there are three lumens, proximal, medial, and the distal. With the distal lumen having the biggest um, gauge, a uh, biggest uh, lumen that is a 16 gauge uh, in size. So first of all, we must make sure that we have the sterile water ready, and then we have to uh, make sure that the catheter is being flushed. Make sure the air has been removed okay, from the catheter. Okay, you flush a bit and then we clamp it. Right? So each of the catheter you have to do this to ensure that the air is being removed to prevent uh, venous air embolism from being introduced into the into the central veins of our uh, patient. Okay. So make sure that it is uh, properly um, de-aired. Okay. So once you have identified and done this, and then uh, the guide wire, we should see that is curved. All right. It is curved, meaning that it's in the original uh, position. And then we have the uh, what they call the blade, whereby you will make a skin nick on the patient's skin, and then. Uh, this is a dilator and this is the uh, needle whereby we will insert on the patient. After we have taken the consent from the patient, make sure the patient is comfortable and at times we may need the patient's uh, head to be in a Trendelenburg position, it means that it is like head down slightly um, below the normal position of the patient. Why is that to improve the venous return so that the uh, venous or the IJV will be distended, the internal jugular vein will be distended a bit. So sometimes it will be uh, useful for this, especially in patients in hypovolemic shock. Once you have identified the location, make sure the area has been sterilized. Okay, we use the alcohol, okay, in the 70% uh, alcohol, so that make sure the area is properly clean and sterilized. After that, we put on the Sterile trap on the patient. Sorry, Mr. Najib, and it is positioned appropriately. With us in the anatomical landmark that we want, we identify the region again. Before that, we must make sure and in communication with the patient to make sure that he's comfortable. All right, Mr. Najib, we are going to identify the landmark again. So again, uh, make sure that sterile color mask is there. The, the bellies of the canal mastoid, the clavicles, and the thyroid cartilage has been identified. So I identified the carotid pulsation, which is on the medial side of my finger, which is, you no, know, it's on my finger. 
and then my side of insertion will be about one or one and a half centimeter lateral to the carotid pulse. Okay. After we have uh, infiltrated our local anesthesia, we will put in our needle. All right, so put in gently uh, with our watchful eyes to further venous blood. Okay. Sometimes it's, it's a bit uh, difficult to locate for the venous blood. Okay, once we see the venous blood, which will come up as a darkish uh, colored blood, non pulsatile in nature. So we are confirmed that it is in the internal jugular vein. So we have to steady our fingers controlling the uh, needle, and then we have to railroad our right wire through the needle gently into the patient's vein like this so it should be smooth should be unobstructed should be very good flow right so we have to be careful sometimes it's too deep it will cause arrhythmia to the patients as sounded by the ECG. So once we have to be careful with that, we don't go too deep as it will cause arrhythmia. Appropriately uh, placed, so we have to remove this uh, uh, needle gently and putting in place our guide wire inside too. So with that, we will have to insert our central venous catheter via the guide wire itself gently thread it through and make sure that it's exited so sometimes you have to unlock it first so that the guide wire can pass through the so once the guide wire is out, we must clamp it. Make sure that it's appropriately clamped. And we gently we thread it through to our central venous line, the catheter itself. All right. So usually we push it in and we gently remove the The guide wire so once you have removed the guide wire it will be safe so usually we have to anchor at about 15 centimeter at the skin area so about 15 centimeter at the skin area we have to uh, anchor so to push it in up to 15 centimeter will do that's why we place our suture in the uh, on the skin so this is the way we insert the internal jugular Vein central venous line in a sterile aseptic technique.